Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to go over the tangle-free method of rigging Dave's tangle-free weights for steelhead float and bead fishing. I'm going to explain why I recently switched to this method over using like one of these rolling dropper swivels or a snap swivel. And at the end I'm going to go over in depth how I set up my bead fishing rig and I'll even provide you with a diagram that you can save for future reference. So this story begins on New Year's Day. If you watch the video, New Year's Day Steelhead, you know I had a couple of break-offs. Now, the second break-off was a little bit suspicious where the line broke. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at that clip. If it runs down the river, I'm done. Oh, it broke off. Wow, where did it break? Holy moly, look at that. It broke my line like right in front of my swivel. <laughs> oh, no. So you can see that the leader broke like an inch from that dropper swivel. Now, I suspected that it could have got tangled up in that dropper swivel, but one of my viewers, Dan B, had brought up that as well. And he had mentioned that he had gone to Dave's Tangle Free site and found this Tangle Free method. So I went on to Dave's site and I researched the method, ordered some stuff from Dave's. I already needed some stuff, so why not order a few extra things? And so I ordered some swivels and some split rings in addition to some additional weights. And what it is, is it's a split ring with the weight on the split ring with two barrel swivels. One side of the barrel swivel goes to your bumper, one side goes to your leader. And so I've been using that since late January and I've had really good success. In fact, I've hooked a couple fish even in these low tough conditions. It's actually raining right now, thank goodness. Rivers are all blown out, so I'm really looking forward to this next drop. But regardless, I'm really happy with it. And so I decided to do a video to just kind of update where I'm at with my bead fishing rig because it's ever evolving. And I'll go over that in just a minute. Now the disadvantage of this is if you put the Dave's Tangle Free weight directly on the split ring, it's hard to take off and on. It's not quite as easy as having a snap swivel. But I truly believe that snap swivel could be a, a weak link. I believe that your leader line or even your bumper can kind of get wrapped in that. And so the idea, at least this is how it was explained on Dave's site, is that when you cast this setup, the weight is the heaviest so it's going to be leading and so it's going to be pulling your bumper material and your leader behind it and so this allows everything to kind of work in conjunction with one another instead of the swivel or the rolling dropper swivel working against everything and potentially causing your leader to get hooked around the actual swivel so you can do one of two things you can carry a pair of split ring pliers on the river with you so that you can change weights or you can do what I decided to do, and that is to pre-rig all of your fishing weights with split rings and two barrel swivels. So this is my eighth ounce Dave stick weights. This is my quarter ounce. They already are rigged with split rings and two barrel swivels. And I just carry those right in my chest pack. I even have a couple in my box that I have my floats. So in general, I'm using eighth ounce or quarter ounce stick weights because I use AF6 floats by Hawken and they only come in eighth ounce and quarter ounce. Now I do have some AF5s and 3 8 half ounce and 5 8 and I have stick weights for those as well if I do want to switch to a heavier weight. However, if you break off just your weighting system, you can go ahead and pull one of these out, tie your bumper to the one swivel, tie your leader to the other swivel, you're back in business. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rig one up just so you can see how it's done. So I've got a pair of split ring pliers and what split ring pliers are is they basically have a little tooth at the top of the jaw on the top side. And that's designed to open up these split rings. So I'm gonna go over here to this camera, open up that split ring, see that? And then I'm gonna take the barrel swivel, I'm just gonna start with one and basically put it in that open split ring. Now that it's kind of keeping that split ring open, I'm gonna go ahead and put the second barrel swivel on. And since, again, it's kind of keeping that open, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this stick weight right on there. 
just like so. Now I'm going to use my split ring pliers to roll that so that they're in place. And there you have it. So there's the tangle-free method of rigging these weights. So now let's go over my bead fishing rig in detail and I'll explain why each step is so important. Now, one of my new friends, Richard T, he actually made me a CAD diagram of this setup and I'm gonna put it on my Rage Fishing Facebook page and I'll also post it on Instagram, at Steelhead Rage, if you wanna go and save it for future reference. If I put it up on the screen here and you screenshot it, it just won't have the detail. So to start out with, I'll explain the rod that I like to use. It's a G Loomis E6X, it's the 1143. It's a spinning rod. It's paired up with a Shimano Vanford 3000, awesome reel. I actually did a gear review on this. If you wanna go and check that out, I'll put a link above. But I have it spooled up with Power Pro Super Slick. This is 20 pound test. I would probably recommend going with 30. I've been playing around a little bit with 20 pound and I notice I get a little bit more tip wrap with 20 than I did with 30. It could just be that I've been fishing in some windy conditions, but I probably will go back to 30 pound test. So the first step is you want to tie a heavy mono bumper on your braided line. Now the reason that's important is you want your slip float to be able to slide on that bumper very easily and the heavier line allows that to happen. So I either use Maxima Ultra Green or P-Line CXX. This is 12 pound Ultra Green, this is 15 pound CXX. For purposes of today, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna tie on 12 pound test Ultra Green. Now, you wanna tie a bumper that's the depth of the river that you're gonna be fishing. I say usually between 10 and 12 feet. I generally don't fish rivers that are much deeper than that because I'm more looking for that three to eight foot holding water. So. My wingspan, hand to hand, is about five feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take about 10 feet out, and then I'll pull out probably about another two feet. So I'm gonna tie this on with an Alberto knot. An Alberto knot is one of those knots that you have to practice quite a bit to get good at it, but once you get good at it, you can tie them super fast. So I tie seven wraps, and again, I have a video on my channel in depth how to tie this. Seven wraps up, seven wraps down. It's important that you make sure that both the tag end and the main braided line are going through the loop in the same way. The thing I like about the Alberto knot is it is super small profile. So next I'm going to put two Dacron bobber stops on the bumper line. And the reason I do two is sometimes one of them will fall off and it keeps me fishing. Also two adds a little bit more resistance so that your bobber stays in place and it doesn't start sliding on you. So get those on there. So got two of those on. Next, a bead. Now Aerofloat comes with these bright yellow beads. I really like them because I can see them for a, a long distance. So that's gonna go on next. And what that does is it just prevents the slip float from going over the bobber stops. Now I'm going to set up this with a quarter ounce AF6. Thread that on. So that goes through. Then I use just like a little red bead. This doesn't have to be a very bright bead because it's going to be on the bottom side of your bobber. Now this is an important step. These are rubber bobber stops. Now these are Bowmax four to eight pound test. And the reason I go with the smaller one is because it really sticks to the line well and it doesn't slide. So there's a little wire. You go ahead and put the wire loop over your bumper and you just pull the rubber bobber stop onto your bumper. So next I pick up my stick weight that's already pre-rigged with the tangle free method. I'm going to tie my bumper with a trilene knot to one of the barrel swivels. I like the trilene knot because it gives you two loops through the eye of the swivel or the hook or whatever you're tying your knot to. I do five wraps. One, two, three, four, five. And that tag end goes through both loops. Keep everything tight. 
always wet your knots. That ensures that they slide together really tight. Plus, if you don't wet your knots, it creates a little bit more friction and friction equals heat, which will weaken your line. So next, it's time to tie on the leader material with the bead. Now, if you've been following my channel, you know I like the Sweet Pink Cherry b &R Soft Bead. These are 12 millimeter, but I have to say the last still head I caught was actually on a 12 millimeter pink pearl. Th those are both great beads, but because right now it's raining outside and I have a feeling our rivers are gonna be a little bit high for a while, I'm gonna go right to the Sweet Pink Cherry. I think it's gonna stand out a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a 12 millimeter Sweet Pink Cherry out. And I have my bead rigs pre-rigged in these pips boxes. I always have a bunch of them with me. That way I can tie my leaders in advance with the T-stops in place. And I'll kind of show that so you can kind of see how that works. So I pre-tie these with about 36 inches of line because I want to have this 30 inches. Now at 30 inches, I actually put a black mark on my line with a Sharpie. And that way I know exactly where to pull that through that barrel swivel when I go to rig up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my 12 millimeter Sweet Pink Cherry on my leader material here. Pull that through to the T-stop. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put my leader material on the second barrel swivel. Pull that to that Sharpie mark. Try lean knot. Cut off your tag end. And there's your system right there. So now that we have the bead rig all set up, let me explain what you want to do with the bobber stops. Now the Dacron should be set so that your weighting system can touch the river's bottom. It can even be slightly deeper because it's okay if that's dragging just a little bit. You want your bobber to be reading that it's touching the bottom. If, you're, if your rigging is floating down the river like this with the top of your bobber pointing slightly up river, that means that it's not touching the bottom. You should see this starting to tip over here and there and that's a perfect depth. So now let me explain what the rubber bobber stop on the bottom is designed to do. Well, it's twofold. First and foremost is if you get your weighting system hung up and break off, 99% of the time you're gonna get your float back. The other thing it does is it gets you fishing faster. So what I try to do is I try to set it as deep as I can and still be able to cast because that allows the slip float to get to the Dacron just a little bit faster. Because if you think if you have your Dacron set at six feet and you have this all, your bobber all the way down at your weighting system, when you cast in, your float has to go six feet before you're down in fishing depth. If you can get this up a couple feet, at least get it started, you'll be fishing a little bit faster. So there you have it. There's my bead fishing rig. So if this tip was helpful, consider subscribing. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. I generally put out a new video on Fridays at 6 p.m., but if I don't have something of quality, I'm just not gonna post. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment field below. I'll get back to you. And if I earned it, hit the thumbs up. That helps me out on YouTube. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.